Good morning. Welcome to Pike Technologies webinar. Before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Jenny Briggs and I work as an applications engineer at Pike Technologies. One of my primary responsibilities is to help our users find sampling solutions. So let's get started. So today's objectives, we're going to work through ATR calculations, and by doing so, intermix an interactive Pike Calc tutorial found on our website. And let's look at some selected applications to reinforce those principles. We're gonna cover several different calculations. The first three being um, critical angle. This is gonna be used to determine if ATR is going to work. We've got the depth of penetration, and that looks at how deep in the sample we're looking, and the effective depth, which is a measurement of an equivalent transmission path length. And the last three calculations we'll do tend to be supportive calculations for the effective depth and the depth of penetration. So there is an overview, but let's jump right into ATR. ATR by far is the most popular sampling technique out there, and it has so many pros. It's easy, you can put your sample on the crystal fast. It has a short path length. And lastly, it's a surface technique. And if you look at the cons, it's a surface technique. Now that's not a typo. ATR surface, surface probing, because it's so shallow, can be a blessing or a curse. So blessing, if you have a thick polymer, you won't have any problem measuring it. The curse would be, for example, let's say someone brought you a sample to the lab in a plastic bag and they said, hey, can you tell me what this is? But perhaps what if it got contaminated by bag wax? So when you put it on your ATR, you're not seeing the sample. Because it is a surface technique, you're seeing something else. So here's an example of a thick polymer run in transmission and by ATR. Let me grab my little bouncy ball. Okay, so because in transmission, it's a thick polymer, we're just saturating through here. However, with ATR, because it's a surface technique, now we can resolve these bands. All right, let's look at a little cartoon of a single reflection um, ATR. So the beam's coming in, it's going to create an evanescent wave, and then the beam will internally reflect. With a multiple reflection, the beam will enter and it'll bounce along the crystal, the length of the crystal, creating several different evanescent waves along the way. So here's a question. How many reflections does this multiple uh, reflection crystal below? How many reflections is that? Well, is it one, two, three, four, or is it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? That really depends on how someone's defining it. I've seen uh, commercial manufacturers define it both ways. Most often in at Pike, we define it as the number of reflections on the sample. So in our case, we would call this four reflections. So this is important when you're doing, working on publications. It's always important to put in, to understand the dimensions of your multiple reflection ATR element. So if you read in a, in a publication, oh, they used a 10 reflection crystal. Well, is that 10 reflections on the sample? Or is it 10 total reflections? We put that as the number of reflections on the sample. So to make ATR work, we must have the angle of incidence of the accessory greater than the, the critical angle. So in this little cartoon, this angle right here must be greater than this calculation right here. And the critical angle is a function of the refractive index of your sample and the refractive index of the crystal. So let's go and do a quick pike calc. Okay, so if you're at, um, you can follow along on our website. So if you are at our homepage, so if you're at our homepage, go to resources and then select pike calc. And we have several different uh, tabs here. We're gonna go to ATR calculations. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so you can see a little better. Okay, um, again, here's a list of everything we talked about at the beginning, and we're gonna make pit stops at each one of these boxes, but first, we're gonna stop at the critical angle. Okay, that's the, box, the lower right-hand side box. So to use this to calculate quickly the critical angle, we're gonna put a refractive index of a sample. 
A 1.5 is typical for a polymer, so let's just put that in there. And let's look at, say we're using a diamond ATR, and let's calculate the critical angle. So the critical angle is roughly uh, 39 degrees. So what does that mean? That means our accessory must have an angle of incidence greater than 39 degrees. Let's see what happens with the critical angle once we change to another popular ATR element, which is germanium. And now that critical angle drops all the way down to 22. So your ATR spectrum is a function of several different parameters, one being the angle of incidence for the um, accessory, the refractive index of your sample, as well as the ATR element. You're gonna, we're gonna see illustrations where it's a function of wavelength, the number of reflections, and most importantly, factors influencing your ATR spectrum is contact quality. ATR requires that you have intimate contact between your sample and the ATR crystal. Without that intimate contact, your spectrum uh, bands may not be as strong. Okay, so with fixed angle ATRs, probably most of you have, these are the most popular. Uh, most of you have a an ATR in your sample compartment with a little tiny crystal, maybe a diameter of three millimeters or less. Those are going to have an angle of incidence of 45 degrees. I cannot think of any single reflection commercial ATR with a small crystal size that has an angle of incidence that's too far off from 45. There are some accessories that have a variable angle where we can change the angle on the fly just by changing the position um, of some internal mirrors. Okay, if you're using a variable angle ref angle ATR, and that would be um, helpful if we were, there are some select applications that it's helpful to go in at a high, high angle of incidence, but it's having the ability to change the angle of incidence important. Let's say we're violating the critical angle. This might be a way to changing, increasing the angle to satisfy the critical angle. Our variable angle ATRs, the, we have a, an effective angle of incidence. Now that's going to be a function of the face angle of the ATR prism, as well as the setting on the accessory. Okay, so here's a spectrum of toluene collected with the ATR max. And that we used, it's a, ATR max is a variable uh, multiple reflection angle ATR. I used a face angle crystal of 45 degrees, and I had the VMAX setting at 57. So let's go and calculate this effective angle of incidence. So in this case, we said the accessory set at 57. I used a 45 degree face angled crystal, and it was a zinc selenide. So the effective angle of incidence was roughly 50 degrees. So from there, once we have this effective angle of incidence, we can then in turn come over and calculate the depth of penetration, and those are parameters we're going to get to next.